Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is PJ Kerner. I'm the CTO and co-founder of Illumio. And over the past few years, we've seen incredible interest in segmentation as a key part of, our, of many security programs. And as a leader in segmentation, what we wanted to do here was share some stories and some learnings that we've gathered from doing many segmentation projects for all different sizes of companies. So first, I want to tell you a little bit about Illumio. Right? Illumio's mission is to enable every organization to realize a future without high profile security breaches. And we do this by providing you the capabilities to dynamically segment your most critical assets away from others to prevent threats that exploit lateral movement that you might or might not realize you have. Right? And these threats come from many places. They come from malware and ransomware or from unauthorized access or you know, unauthor you know, from, from unauthorized insiders, right? Uh, malicious insiders. But the concept of segmentation is not new, right? And it exists in the physical world as well. So submarines are built with compartments that can be sealed off from each other. So when there's a breach and the water floods into one compartment, the damage can be limited to a small part of the sub and it won't sink. Right? That kind of physical resili resilience is required for submarines to remain safe. And you want to apply the same segmentation techniques to get similar cyber resilience for your organization. Right? And that's the promise that segmentation offers. Right, and you'll, as you'll see through the demos and the stories that we tell, you know, um, Illumina starts by helping you build a map, providing you visibility about what's and understanding what's happening in your environment, in your workloads, in your endpoints, in your data centers and clouds. Um, and, and while some customers, you know, feel, you know, find incredible value in the visibility alone, um, what we do is we help take that map and help you plan and implement a zero trust segmentation strategy, right? That's that's right for your environment and sort of meet your goals. And while we've met the needs of the largest enterprises in the world, all projects start small, right? And with, at, here at Illumio, we're here to help you on your zero trust journey. Now, let me tell you a little bit about why I started this company. There were three trends in the industry that I was sort of seeing, and I'm gonna talk about each of them briefly. So one, there was dynamic compute. And if you sort of think about how compute was, you know, 10, 15 years ago, it's like you used to look in the catalog, you figure out what server you wanted, what the specs were, you ordered it, and like it showed up, you know, months later, uh, then you had to wait for it racked and stacked, and it was a long time. Compute was not dynamic. Um, you know, VMware came in and you could now have a, you know, a, a virtual machine on demand, you have AWS arrive, and if I had a credit card, I could have actually dynamic scalable computes, right, in minutes. Um, and if you sort of think about today, um, you have the idea of containers and functions of the service, which is another, with, which is another kind of dimension. So, dynamic compute um, was was always is always going to be increasing. Secondly, we see how applications have sort of changed. Like again, in the good old days, as you know, traffic would come in off the internet, maybe hit your web tier, hit your app tier, hit your database tier, and then the answer would sort of go back. What has happened today? If you want to call it microservices or the API, you know, uh, you know, API culture, right? Everything is now talking to everything else. The complexity of how things are integrated uh, is much, it's much greater you know, everywhere. And then the third thing was this trend around lateral movement risk. I've heard stories about that you know, attackers get in through lower value applications, right? Applications where you might not have applied you know, application security as rigorously as, as you can, but they get in there and then they move laterally easily in these you know, data sense clouds to high value applications. That's the risk uh, that exists and, and is growing. So those three things, you know, this dynamic compute and the fact that static policy was not going to be able to, compute, to, to keep up with that. More, the, the idea of this more com complexity, more connectivity, and that this complexity of being able to do a zero trust policy was increasing. And then this risk was growing. Those were the three things. And Illumio came out of, what does a security solution to mean? What does a security solution have to be to be you know, fast, deal with that complexity and address that risk? And that was the vision. That is the, that is the vision that started Illumio and continues to fuel us. Um, and, but, but, and that's why we started. But let me hand it off to Matt to talk a little bit more about exactly where we are today. Thank you, PJ. My name is Matthew Glenn. I'm the SVP of product management. And this is, I think my fifth uh, tech field day. I'm super excited to be here. Since uh, uh, PJ, I joined the company about seven plus years ago, and you know we've been working on fulfilling that mission. 
And then just a little bit more background about the company. So if you don't know about Illumio, chances are last time you made a payment, you took money out of the bank, you wrote a check, chances are that was processed through systems that are secured by Illumio. Literally, we secure trillions of dollars on a daily basis. Um, and you know, we really focused on solving those critical problems to do segmentation. And so a lot of the financial services companies throughout the world use Illumio. If you go to Wikipedia and you look at the list of the largest banks in the world, the vast majority of them are using Illumio for their internal segmentation needs. Um, the other large vertical that we dominate is the largest business-to-business -business SaaS providers. Um, you can see a sampling of them on that ribbon below of the customer names. What's interesting, though, between the SaaS providers and the banks, often when we talk to the teams at the banks, they consider themselves you know, tech companies that just simply move money around. So uh, think about companies where their application is the application, SaaS providers, and you know, banks as being, you know, their technology stack is super complex and their segmentation needs are vast. Right now we have millions of workloads in production uh, and secured literally globally. <clears throat> and recently, Illumio uh, was the company that appeared on the top right hand corner of the most recent Forrester Zero Trust wave. We were really um, you know, honored uh, to reach that. And many of the demos we're gonna be talking about today speak to how you can get to zero trust using Illumio and some of the hidden things that happen along that journey. We're also very pleased about our customer satisfaction. If you go to Gartner and look at their peer insights, we have an incredibly high rating. Uh, you know, if this was Amazon, this is the shopping season, this, that's the type of rating that I'd be looking for in a product that I'd want to buy. And we're listed on many of the fast company lists out there. Um, and so, you know, since PJ founded the company, we've grown, we've secured a lot of workloads and a lot of applications around the world. Before we get to the demonstration of our technology, uh, I want to just quickly orient uh, everyone out there about what you're about to see. So this is an architectural overview of our platform. Um, and our, our platform is completely software-based. It's really comprised of two pieces of software. The first piece of software is something we call a virtual enforcement node. Now, ironically, the VAN or virtual enforcement node in no way is an enforcement point. It's not in line. It doesn't do any form of deep packet inspection, doesn't crack packets or anything like that. One of our customers calls it an antenna, and I sort of like that term. What does an antenna do? It's going to send and receive information. It's going to tell us what processes are listening on a host, what interfaces are on any given host. It'll tell us what that host is talking to and what's talking to that host. It's going to send that up to this that uh, orange box in the middle of your screen right now. That's what we call the policy compute engine. The policy compute engine we deliver on customer's prem, we deliver it as a SaaS. And honestly, we don't even charge uh, for the policy compute engine. The first thing that you're gonna get out of that is a live application dependency map. What you do with that map is you describe how you want things to communicate. Like for my ordering application, I want the web tier opened up to a backend server on a load balancer. That web tier talks to an app tier, that app tier talks to a database tier. What that policy compute engine does, it's really a brain and a graph engine underneath it. It's going to compute, it's going to turn that natural language policy into layer three, layer four instructions, firewall rules, and send it back down to those vents. And this is the receiving function on those, uh, on those, uh, on those vents. What the vent does is it doesn't enforce the policy. What it does instead is it's going to program the native stateful firewalls that are already inside of those hosts. So in Linux, we use IP tables. In Windows, we use the Windows filtering platform. In Solaris and AIX, we use IP filter. Uh, we'll also program switch ports. We'll program F5 load balancers, um, VMware's Avi load balancers, um, uh, switch ports, et cetera. The philosophy of the product is, we believe you have all the enforcement points you've ever needed you simply lack the visibility to understand what, how to program them, and you never really had a way to program them efficiently. One last quick note. 
Um, traditionally, the VIN was installed inside of the operating system as an MSI, if it was a Windows system or an RPM, if it was a Linux system. Um, when we look at containers and we look at sort of the trend there, uh, a lot of the uh, containers are running on minimalistic operating systems like Core OS, or if you run your containers in EKS, which is the Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service or the Azure Kubernetes Service, you can't install an agent. So instead of running the VEN as an agent, it simply runs as a container, as a daemon set inside of your Kubernetes clusters. So you still get the same level of enforcement. So philosophically, you get one large application dependency map across your existing data centers, public and private cloud environments. And that map extends to your bare metal servers, your VMs, your IaaS instances, and your containers running in public cloud.